Uh, right now, though, we have uh, Stephen Kramer Glickman, friend of the show. Is he? There he is. He's Get in there, buddy. Hi. You said you'd come back, and you did. I said I would come back, yeah. and I'm here. Host the nighttime show at the Hollywood Improv, which I heard was a yes. huge success. Oh my god, it was amazing! It was uh, we we always have like a sold out, like packed night, but this was the first time we were sold out to capacity. Uh, after like, which is like crazy. That's like fire marshal stuff. Where, oh, like, that's everyone's good stuff. like super packed in. It's super, you know, the energy's real hot. The fire marshal's here. Yes. Oh my god, it was amazing. Uh, we had uh, we gave away um. Uh, shots of uh, fireball, fireball to everybody. Like l- almost every single person in the audience got a shot, which was amazing. That's how you pack a place. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then uh, we did something really fun that your listeners loved because we brought, uh, uh, we we ended up bringing uh, Logan Henderson, who's on Big Time Rush with me, up on stage. Him and me played uh, like a, a little game of like tennis on stage like it was little tennis rackets uh-huh. and then uh so badminton like we played badminton okay. like basically no, oh he said it right he said Bad, it right badminton you did, you did that on badminton. purpose to correct him badminton he's that polite corrector of english uh, badminton let me see your let me see your shuttlecock get it over here let me, let me, <laughs> i'm talking about badminton but uh your your listeners that were there were really excited because we gave away uh 260 crispy cream donuts to yeah. the audience at the end Whiskey of the show. Whiskey and donuts. I mean, that's that's how that's you get a, our audience. That's a hell of an audience right there. You guys have a great audience, and they were so cool. P- I, I was asking people when they were coming in how they heard about the show, and like a lot, a lot of people were like, Heidi and Frank, Heidi and Frank. It was great. They're a good it's group. very cool. Yeah. We're one, super great. One big dysfunctional family. So uh, oh, welcome to the yeah. family, Steven. Well, thanks for having mm-hmm. me. I love being here. That's and- some set, by the way. I was looking at all the pictures online, because oh you know you God. were describing it, and I was like, okay, it is like a late night talk show set. It, yeah, it really was. Uh, Dane Cook was amazing and super super funny and uh and we played uh 20 questions in two minutes together on stage where i have to ask him the 20 questions in two minutes and he killed it it was super does fun does he have to answer or is there like a, a he for, can... for every answer for every answer that he answers we give away a shot to the audience oh, so of it's kind of like so answer. he wants to answer he wants to have fun and then uh, uh tom segura was unbelievably yeah. funny that guy is a beast <laughs> like <laughs> oh my god sitting on stage and watching him perform and see, like seeing how that audience was reacting, it was it was outrageous. I mean, the guy is. Uh, When's the next one? What's the next? Uh, sure, uh, next one is show. Uh, is June eighteenth. Uh, the lineup is absolutely ridiculous. It's uh, Wendy Liebman, uh, the Lucas Brothers, Harland Williams, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and um, uh, Mo Collins from Mad TV is coming back uh, to perform. So that's as of right now. Another big our, show. You better buy your tickets now. Oh, right? yeah. yeah, June 18th at the Hollywood Improv. You can uh, check it out online at the Hollywood Improv. See what we're talking about. Now, uh, to the Heidi and Frank Show. Now with Lisa May. On the Rock of Southern California. 95.5 KLOS. <clears throat> Heidi and Frank Show. Candlebox will be in here in a, less than a half an hour. We're going to be performing live in the studio and then performing at the KLOS Warehouse. Uh, this evening, and I still have some more pairs of tickets for that show if uh, you'd like to go. Uh, right now, uh, Stephen Kramer Glickman's with us. Yeah! Glickman! We are taking calls about uh, being stalked. When did you realize you had a stalker? This guy, I mean, you don't realize it when you're dating somebody, but then you want to break up and they don't take no for an answer. And this guy was texting this woman 118 text messages over an eight hour period. And that's when she's like, okay, this is getting scary. This guy's, uh, he's, he's snapped. I need to call the, the authorities. He was arrested. Uh, so we're up to Glickman's story of uh, being stalked. Well, it's kind of a stocky story, sort of. Well, here's so here's what happened. Um, at the height of doing Big Time Rush on Nickelodeon, uh, <laughs> I I was at a uh, Halloween party, and uh, it was it was uh, me and the Glee cast were all there, and we're all like a couple of look Nickelodeon at you, actors. High roller. Oh My yeah, God. look at me. It's pretty big deal. Hanging out with a bunch of <laughs> weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I'm a grown man. I was like the grown man in the group. I was always weird that I was there, but yeah. you know, I'm hanging out. And we're all having a nice time. Time. And while we're hanging out, this girl comes up and she starts uh, chatting me, you know, chatting with me and stuff. And she's like, "So, uh, can I ask you a quick question?" And I'm like, "Yeah, well, you know, what's going on?" She's like, "Um, like, I feel like we may have met before. Like, I feel like we know each other. Are you friends with my sister, Kate? Uh, I'm Kate Moss's sister." 
And I was like, oh, my God. Uh, yeah, sure. You know, and I was like, <laughs> like I kind of, yeah, I yes and. I yes yeah. and did it, right? right? I was like, yeah. sure, sure. I've met, I I may have met her at some point. I don't know. Yeah, I've, been, I've been around, right? So Kate like, Moss it, being the supermodel. Supermodel. Right? Supermodel, right. supermodel Kate Moss from back in the day. Yeah, so she's like, oh, my God. Like, it's so great to meet you. Like, blah, 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 blah. Um, like, we need to hang out. Let me get, let me take your phone. Takes my phone, puts her number in my phone, and texts herself right away. Okay. Yeah. I was like, ooh, <laughs> okay. Whoa. Well, well, well. And she she's gorgeous, a beautiful girl. Right. So we're uh we're hanging out all night and uh and then over the next week, uh we were texting and calling every night. Like every night she'd text me and we'd uh, have a little call every night and she'd tell me like, Oh my god, like, I'm trying so hard to make it in this town. Like it's so difficult because like my like my sister like really made it hard for herself, you know, for for me and like I don't want to follow in her footsteps and I don't want to get I don't want to do drugs the same way that she did and like I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best, Steven. And like <laughs> I wanna make my father proud, you know. Like like for like a god. week straight we're doing this, right? I find it's finally time for our date. Okay. I go, I pick her up at her place. I'm driving She's her. She's not the one you brought roses to. No, no, no. Did not okay. bring her Different roses. Different accent. Different <laughs> accent. Different girl. I'm driving her from the valley. We're driving up and uh, over the hill. We're going to go to Katana for dinner. I love, oh. love Katana. Oh. Right? I'm classy. I'm Seriously. Classy. Very classy gentleman. Uh, as we're pulling over, we're coming over the hill, uh, she goes, um, there's something I want to tell you, but I'm afraid if I tell you, like, you're going to be mad. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be mad. You can tell me anything you want. She goes, well, I, I feel like, like, I just don't want to disappoint you. And I was like, no, do you have a boyfriend? Is that what this is? She goes, no. Oh my God, no. I was like, all right, well then, you know, what is it? Anything you tell me, it's going to be cool. She goes, well, like, you know how I told you like all about my sister and everything? And I'm like. Yeah, but but Kate Moss. She goes, well, she's not, she's not my like my actual like real sister. <laughs> and I was like, stepsister. She's like stepsister, like cousin. She was like, no, no, I've never met her. Oh my god. I've never, we never met. And I was like, what are you talking about? What do you mean you never met her? She's like, well, I just like, like I was afraid, like if I just came up to you and like told you I was like a regular, you know, person, you know, like you would, you would like not want to like talk to me because you were with all these other like celebi people and like it'd be so weird, you know, and like I'm so sorry and I feel like, I feel like the worst. And I was like, look, it's, it's fine. <laughs> just, just look, you don't have to do things like that. Okay. You're a very beautiful girl. You can just, just be yourself. Okay. Just be yourself. And she yeah. goes, okay. There's like one other thing. I was like, oh my God, what? What is it? She goes, well, I feel like if I tell you, you're going to be like so mad. I'm like, oh my, God. oh my God. What is it? What could it possibly be? You know, like what? And she goes, well, I promise you won't be mad. I was like, okay, I promise I won't be mad. She goes, okay, I'm not like actually like really British. <laughs> And I was like, excuse me? And she goes, I'm actually from New York. I moved here a few years ago. Oh, I was like, my God. I was like, Ray Romano? What are you doing in my car? She was like, no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm okay. It's okay. It happens, you know? I was like, I was like, you know what? Oh, my God. I go, uh, Lisa, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And she goes, my name is actually Patricia. But the point is, I drive her home. This is a true story. I drive her home, okay? I'm dropping her off at home. She gets out of the car. As she's getting out, she goes, I'm really sorry. I apologize. As she's getting out of the car, her boyfriend comes out of the house. She goes, hey, what are you doing with my freaking girlfriend? <laughs> Throws a baseball bat at my car as my car drives away. That is a true story. Oh, my God. Fact. Oh. That happened. That is wow. a true story. I've never That's told the that best. To, like publicly. So. That's so funny. <laughs> I've talked about it a little on stage, but never like, that like this. That is incredible. So. Oh, my God. I'm not actually <laughs> Just one little thing. That's good stuff. I don't know if I can take another call after that one. It's like, who wants to follow that? Oh. <laughs> That's a great That's story. That's so great. <laughs> but before we uh, check traffic and go to break, got to find out what Glickman did last night because he came in with a stamp on his oh, hand. Oh, God. Um...
Yeah, I went to Tommy Chong's birthday party. So oh my god, so you haven't dude! Been to bed yeah, yet. Cheech and Chong. My god, he's a friend of the show. He's you didn't have a plus times. one. You couldn't have called oh, me. My god, how much weed did you smoke last night? Uh, I don't remember anything that happened <laughs> last night. That's the. I'm suck. gonna be honest with you. I were the candles all joints. You know what? It was a really, it was really crazy. It was a uh, a huge party with a lot of amazing uh, people, and they did. They had uh, comics perform on stage. Reggie Watts was there. Which was amazing. Were you uh, there as a performer, or party goer? I was just there as a party oh, goer. Oh, nice. But uh, I have a weird, I have a weird like weed history. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about that on the show. Can we talk about anything? We can talk about anything. Um, uh, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't smoke marijuana. Uh, well, we can't talk about not smoking. Very, it. very uh, well, very, <laughs> uh, very often. Right. Uh, the one of the last times I did it, and this is a, a fact, and I'll try to wrap this story up as quickly as I, I possibly can. Um, Snoop Dogg's bodyguard. Had been on Big Time Rush with me. He, I got him cast to play my my bodyguard on uh-huh, the show. Right. And so then Snoop saw the show, and then he wanted to come do the show and do our Christmas episode. And so I ended up getting to hang out with Snoop Dogg at uh, you know, when we were doing the show. And he turned to me on set, and he was like, uh, "Yo, dog, I just want to let you know when we rap tonight, I got you." And I was like, "What's that? What's that mean?" He goes, "Well, you hooked up my boy, so tonight when we rap." Son, I got you. And I was like, would you would you get me? <laughs> <laughs> Is it a surprise? Yeah, no idea what that meant, right? And so then him and I end up in a like my little dressing room and it's just him and me and he pulls out um he sets he sets the mood. I don't know if you can if you can pull up uh music on your thing there. But uh, he he turned on Enya. Do you guys know oh, yeah. Enya? Oh, of course we have Enya at the ready. Do, really? Is that yeah. a real thing? <laughs> Enya. And so he he yeah. comes in and he turns on, uh, he lights a candle, okay? And then, there we go. It's exactly what it was. And he turns on Enya, the music. So Enya's playing. And because uh, that, like, his with his choice, his music choice. And uh, he pulls out a joint, okay? And this thing is literally the, like, it's like three, four, five inches long. It's like five inches long, and it's like the thickness of, like, my thumb. It's like a cigar. It's huge. It's enormous, oh right? And uh, he lights it up, and he hands it to me, and I'm like, I'm going to do two hits of this, and then I'm done. Like, I, can, I, I don't smoke weed very often, right? So I'm like, take one hit, out, one more, out. And he goes, uh... Yo, son, it's puff puff pass. And I was like, No, I know. I just pu- I just puff puffed. Yeah. Yeah, I just yeah. puff puffed. And now I'm gonna Technically, pass it. it was a puff and a puff. It was a puff and a puff. Yeah, and now I'm gonna pass puffs. it. And he goes, Man, you've been smoking that for like 15 minutes. <gasps> and I was like, I have. And he goes, <laughs> Yeah, and you have both. I was like, I have both. <laughs> What's happening? And I started uh, melting down as a human being. Oh my god. And I go, He goes. Yo, man, when's the last time you smoked? I was like, like 15 years ago? And he goes, you want to die tonight, son? <laughs> you want to die tonight? And I was like, ah! Right, I started freaking out. Here's a, okay, we can cut the music. This is a fact. Okay. This is the fact is, and guys, you both know this. When you smoke marijuana with Snoop Dogg, you get cool points, right? For sure. Definitely. When you cry in front of Snoop Dogg <laughs> and hyperventilate into a bag... <laughs> You get negative cool points <laughs> for life. And um, oh I've seen Snoop Dogg many times since then. And every time I see him, he goes, ah, 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 points at me and laughs every time. And then he tells everyone around us, that dude cried. That dude cried. The whole, it's a, that's a true story. Oh. Stephen, well, thank you so much. Quick, right. when you get the, the nighttime show at the Hollywood Improv, it's going to be oh uh, in June. June eighteenth, uh, Harlan Williams, um, uh, yeah, Wendy Liebman, Mo Collins, the Lucas Brothers. It's a great show.